This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. Link Energy Limited, ASX LNC, is a leader in underground coal gasification. They produce a synthetic gas which can be used either for power generation or turned back into a liquid for synthetic fuel production. The company objective is to commercialise underground coal gasification first in South Australia. It's very exciting stuff and we're here at a Limelight Series cocktail event at the Sir Stamford at Circular Quay. Very pleasant CEO and recent TV star Peter Bond joins me now. The technology first, what is underground coal gasification? Underground coal gasification is uh, where you literally uh, um, um, are gasifying coal beneath the surface. So if you, we concentrate on stranded coal. That's coal that's roughly more than 200 metres in depth. Um, more than say three hours from a marketplace, so it's not it's not where uh, most people are going to mine it. It's coal that w won't, in our generation, be exploited or, or probably forever. What we do is we uh, if you what is gasification is a great question because gasification is my just, next question. It's just a it's just a lump. If you take a lump of coal, it's been around 200 years or more than that actually. You took a lump of coal, you put it in a box, you heated the box up to 1200 degrees centigrade. In the absence of, of atmosphere, you're just in a box. Um, what would happen is that solid coal would turn into a gas. The, the uh, fixed carbon would turn to carbon monoxide, the uh, water would turn to hydrogen and so on. Um, and it's just a standard uh, solid to gaseous state, um, standard physics and chemistry. Um, what you need for that is you need a high carbon environment, closed uh, confined space, high temperature, 1200 degrees, um, and you need to just put a bit of oxygen down, a bit of air, um, to mm -hmm. make sure that all happens the way you need to, but away from atmosphere. So the perfect place to do that is underground, where you can create a cavity, um, you know, the size of this room. Um, you you literally, it's it's glowing red hot. It's 1,200 degrees centigrade, and what happens is in a confined space, um, you put a, a well down, uh, two wells, you're getting the gasification process going, it consumes the coal and the gas comes out the second well. And now, crucially, you're not burning the coal, are you're you? not burning the coal, you're gasifying the coal. Okay, so it's a chemical process. It's, it's, yeah, it's a chemical, it's basically a chemical physical reaction, but there, you're left a void, there is no coal left. It's like coal mining without, without the effort or without the environmental issues. Obviously, you're not digging massive holes in the surface, that's got to be a benefit? No, you're not. It's uh, envi environmentally a miles ahead. All you've got is a series of wells, probably a half a dozen or so wells, uh, with a pipe running down to your commercial application power station or gas to liquids plant. And um, on the surface, you've just got a series of wells. You've got no mining, you've got no uh, stockpiles, you've got no uh, dust, you've got no emissions. It's a, it's a very, very clean way of doing it. And talk, let's talk about the gas to liquid technology because the, the, uh, the resulting processes here sort of dovetail off into two areas. One's using the gas, another is converting the gas back into a liquid for That's use right. in things like diesel fuels. Yep. How does that process work? Well, there are two different processes. You have the, the taking of the coal and making it a gas where it's, it's coming up out of the pipe, and then you can do various things with it. So that's the first process, making the gas sure. and, and cheap gas. So we like to coin, we own a lot of acreage, around billions of tonnes of coal in Australia and North America, and that's a large part of the company's business plan. And the fact that we control billions of tonnes um, at a, at a cost-effective price means that we can convert that coal into cheap gas in a very cost-effective way. So you're talking about a dollar, dollar fifty per gigajoule gas, which is very cheap synthetic gas. Wow, okay. That gas coming out of a pipe at that sort of price in your backyard is a is a huge econo economic advantage. Taking that gas and then turning it into liquids is is basically run it through what's called a Fisher Trops plant which um, South Africans have been using for 55 years. And all it is is a reactor that's full of catalyst. You pump the gas through the catalyst, and the catalyst joins all the carbon chains in a row, starts at the top, by the time it gets to the bottom, it turns into a liquid. So it's, you're turning the gas back into a liquid by doing that. Now, it's a very pure process, isn't it? The, uh, the resulting, say, diesel fuel doesn't contain the impurities that normal diesel fuel contains, and therefore burns cleaner, more efficiently, yeah. more environmentally friendly? Absolutely. So it's a bit like synthetic oil, which is obviously a high-quality oil. It's exactly the same thing. You're making, you're making, you're producing this product. It's a very homogenous product. It's, it doesn't have the contaminants that mineral oil has or mineral diesel has. Um, it is just a very clean, very high cetane, very, very high octane type product and um, it's uh, an amazing uh, outcome because you can, no matter what you do, the, the, as long as you put the gas in one end, you'll get clean liquids out the other. What, uh, talk about percentages here, what, uh, what percentage will be used, say, for gas that goes into a, 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 a power station to generate electricity as opposed to making diesel fuel on the other side? 
Well, if, you, if you've got a gas to liquids plant, so if you've got a large ga um, UCG operation that's making the gas from the underground coal, you, you, and you've committed to a, a very large gas to liquids plant, which is the plant that makes it into diesel, it's, that's like a size of an oil refinery. So you, right. that takes your priority. So really what you do is you feed most of the gas through that. And um, about 75, 80% of the gas you, you put through that will turn into a diesel product or a liquids product. Um, there's a percentage of gas left over that you would then feed into the power station. So, you know, you, it's about somewhere in the 75 to 80% would go to gas to liquids and about 20 to 25% would go to power generation. Given the, uh, both the cost savings and also the environmental benefits, I'd imagine that politicians haven't been exactly knocking your doors down because it's so obvious. Politicians obviously miss the obvious. H have they been knocking on your door or have you had to go to them and explain, look, these are the kind of, uh, of environmental benefits, these are the kind of cost benefits, and this is the kind of coal we're using, otherwise we would be sitting in the ground doing nothing. Are, are, they, are they open to the argument? Are they on board? Well, like, you know, politicians are like human beings. They, they, um, most human beings, I'm not sure they are humans, but most human beings. <laughs> I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> give them the benefit the of the doubt for the, for the, for the day. Um, look, uh, yes, we, 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 particularly at federal level, uh, Martin Ferguson, um, is a, uh, the uh, Minister of Mines and Energy, is a, is a great supporter of Link and what we're doing in Coal for Liquids and how we're doing it. Um, and he gets, and, and he's a big supporter, and uh, and he's, he's quite visionary in how he gets it. Um, there are a number of other uh, uh, players inside politics that, that we've taken to, uh, to the site and they get it. Um, Minister in, in uh, South Australia, Paul Holloway, uh, again, he's, he's very good and, and he's been at site and uh, again, a good supporter and, uh, and he gets it. Um, and there are not many others. So, um, most people that come to site and see it and join the dots go, it's, it's self-evident, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a great concept, it has to be part of the energy solution. Um, I guess it's just the ones that, that, that don't get there and aren't joining the dots that, that we need to keep working on to win over. Is the, with the government looking at, uh, at a, a fixed CO2 reduction of only, what, 5% by 2020 yep. at the moment, the, using this sort of technology is the potential for Australia as a nation to push that number way higher. Is, uh, is, is pretty significant, isn't it? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a number of ways. I mean, um, obviously, uh, um, if you started to use our, our uh, gasification process to feed gas-fired turbines, you would, drop, um, you would drop your... And using some other technology that, that we have access to, if using gas, um, gas turbines, you're going to drop the CO2 footprint by 25 to 35% straight away. Wow. If you're using uh, fuel cells in some of those applications, you're dropping it by... 85, 90 percent, um, because there is still some footprint. Sure. Um, and uh, and then you've got the synthetic fuels production, where the great benefit for that is because Australia has gone past peak oil. Where so every month, every quarter, every year that goes past, we're importing more oil, and we have to pay for that. We have yep. to physically write the check to the overseas countries to buy that oil. So the coal we export, the wheat we export the iron ore we export, etc. That's all that's going to go is just paying for the oil that we consume and, and some of the other commodities. But the more, every year that goes past, we are basically just exporting our wealth to pay f for the right to drive our cars. Now, if you can produce the oil in this country and retain the wealth in this country by something like we're, what we're doing with gas to liquids, um, then you don't have to put, write that check. The wealth stays in the country. And in terms of environment, too, if I, again, if I'm not mistaken, once you put that, di that synthetic diesel fuel in a diesel car and run the car, the emissions are, what, 35% uh, of what they are currently? That's right, yeah. So, again, it's, it, again, it's a lower CO2 footprint. And, and, and it's not just lower CO2, it's lower particulates, it's lower aromatics, it's, it's, it's zero sulfur. It's, just, it's, it's amazingly... Uh, uh, beneficial and, and far cleaner than, than current fuel products. So not, not only uh, re reduce CO2 emissions, but a cleaner atmosphere generally. Oh, absolutely. And it's a better fuel. I mean, you, you can take uh, synthetic fuels like synth synthetic oil. It's, it's a better product. So you can put synthetic diesel in your car um, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a, got more power. So it's, it's more grunt. It's like premium diesel. Wow. And you can just put it straight into your vehicle. There's no mixing. It's not like biodiesel. It's no, no, it's not ethanol. It's it's the malt scotch of diesel. It's the, it's the best product you can get. Makes a lot more sense. CEO, Peter Bond, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here at ABN. Thanks, Brian.